47 seconds of inescapable logos. What's up with this movie stealing its own tension? By revealing a scene from the back half of the film. Not only do we now know this character at least makes it that far, but we have zero invested in him yet because we don't even know who he is. Ten numbers, four spots. I need a four-digit code. If this guy made it this far, wouldn't he know not to start putting in a code until he figured out what the code was? These rooms are designed to kill you if you make the wrong moves, and at this point, he should know that. Somehow, out of all the things in this room, this random rolled-up poster in a box of many posters contains the first big clip. Follow the light to greener pastures. Light! Follow the light! Yeah, but that required the room to knock the light over for him. I know we're in an escape room designed by Jigsaw, but this is the only room in the movie that requires the killing mechanism to begin before the player is directed where to go. Green! Great book! How green was my valley? Shakespeare in love! Oh, sorry, I thought we were yelling out undeserving Oscar winners. In case you confused it for Chicago, the musical. This is movie code for we knew the first 20 minutes of this movie would be boring as shit, so we began with something towards the end of the story so you f***ers wouldn't pass out. Atoms won't change while you watch them. Kids, pay attention in class, because every single time a movie character is shown in class, they learn something that helps them out of a huge jam later. And opening up front at checkout. Look, I, I, I feel for you, kid. I, I really do. Grocery drama. If that is true, then Ewer's concept of a perfect box can't exist. If Zoe can spout all this, hey, look, I'm super smart mumbo jumbo, you'd think she would also know that the famous mathematician's name is pronounced Euler. Duh. So wait, was that whole previous scene a dream? Or was she having an actual hallucination and then later woke up from a nightmare we didn't see? If you're going to put in the effort to foreshadow some character backstory, maybe don't make it so confusing. Also, if this is a dream, this has got to be the most normal dream ever committed to film. I mean, she even dreams about walking through her dorm while a party rages. No wonder she got fired from Cobb's Inception Company. Wait. You guys aren't doing it, are you? Sniffing for sex evidence. This is one thing I hate about movies with puzzles in them. They spend more time on the character's frustration solving the puzzles than actually giving the viewer a good idea of how the puzzle is solved. RSVPAminosEscapeRooms.com I guess this means they sent out a ton of these boxes, and the ones who got the puzzle solved and RSVP'd first got a reservation? Or did they send just to six people, hoping they'd all solve it in RSVP and all be available on the same day? Amanda Harper's height is 5 foot 40. New math suggests that she's over 8 feet tall. Also, this number at the bottom of the license contains entirely too many 7s, 6s, and 3s to be anywhere near f***ing real. Most guys buy me dinner first. And then they put a name tag on you? What a terrible date. Is that so they'll have a crib note for what name to scream later that night? I'll sneak in a second one. Minos, which is setting up escape rooms to kill people with troubled pasts and doesn't want any proof they exist after the fact, couldn't detect that this kid had another phone. No, nah, man, unfortunately I can't. So I just have sex with adult women to fill the time. Using the word adult as a modifier in this sentence. I, I think this is the escape room. Roll credits. It could be anything anywhere. It's crazy to me that the guy who's been in 80,000 escape rooms in his life looks under the table first and inside the kitchen cabinets when there are magazines and books everywhere in this room that are more likely to contain clues. There are interesting parallels between this movie and David Fincher's The Game, for sure, but this is that pickup artist book by Neil Strauss. Why not have the novel based on the movie? So we're looking for screws? No, no, again, that was the subject of Neil Strauss's The Game. You're losing focus, movie. It's Fahrenheit 451. The problem with a lot of these fake puzzles is that they often aren't progressive, meaning you don't have to do one thing to unlock another. It's clever that each room is meant to play into someone's backstory, but the way this room is designed, you could escape it without actually ever turning the oven on. Please have a seat. Okay. Someone will be with you shortly. Uh, she said that last time. She said it the exact same way, same cadence, same tone. This should not be a revelation. Every single one of these people would know that was a recording the second time they heard it. Or we could just break it off. There's an <laughs> extinguisher right here. Yeah. This is the one part of this escape room that just doesn't make any sense to me. Even though the room gets dangerously hot, there is never a fire to put out until it's too late. Yet this extinguisher holds a key to the partition that leads to the phone call about following all posted rules. And the only reason they use the extinguisher is because they think they can break a tiny lock with it. I know Minos is evil and doesn't care if they live or die, but if you're going to make a sport out of their deaths, at least give them a logical reason to use the items in the room. Hey, I got an idea. Okay, if you can simply press down on the coasters to make the secret door open, then why not stick the glasses on the coasters and put the books on them to weigh them down? Is this hard? Stop yeah. being chivalrous, dude. No one here wants to have sex with you. Damn, shots fired. This is the type of guy who would insult your prowess with women while you're burning alive. We're out of water. What are, you? what are we supposed to do now? Yeah, what in this room could possibly weigh that last glass down? Could it be, I don't know, the books? I don't mean to be heavy-handed with this, but these people's intelligence is weighing down the movie. By the way, I refuse to believe this isn't enough weight to lower the coaster. The first coaster Zoe pushed down went down with a light press. Movie will have you believe that Danny crawled through this duct in four seconds, and I'm not having it. Let's talk about immersive. Even if this guy has a good excuse for thinking it's still all just a game, he has way too much trust in the management of escape room companies. There's no signal. And the fact that Danny snuck a phone into this escape room never comes up again. What was the point of him sneaking in a phone if it didn't become important later? Movie doesn't know how to check off cell phone correctly. You'll go down in history. 
What about this? Can you get that mean something? Yes, it's Rudolph. The clue is Rudolph. And the fact that not a single one of these morons had that immediately spring to mind is making it even more difficult to like them. And the Slumdog Millionaire Award for escaping a room based on prior life experience goes to Ben. You'll go down in history! Man, Tennessee has officially gone overboard by sticking their Don't Drive Drunk commercials in the middle of Saw movies. Threw it off. This is not only the easiest puzzle, it's also the most curious one in the entire movie. What was the danger? Could they have died? Maybe the game makers are throwing a curveball onto that last one where they nearly died, and everybody will think that everything's on the up and up after this, but what's the point of that? Dumb question. Are we outside? Yeah, it really is a dumb question, considering unlike us, you are seeing this room in 3D space, which means it should be plenty obvious that you are staring at a projection and not an endless mountain vista. Yeah, awesome. But the door closed and got barred shut two minutes ago. So are you saying that they could have smashed through the windows back into the disappointing escape room? They want us to fight over limited resources. Not gonna work this time, okay? This time? What do you mean this time? You've been in two rooms and neither of them asked the players to share limited resources. <sighs> Giant fishing hole, how'd you miss that? Because it wasn't there before. Again, I know Minos is trying to kill these people, but the first room and this one both contain clues found by sheer dumb luck. It just feels like I'm playing the world's funnest game with the world's meanest people. Twitter. I just climbed a tree for like the first time in my goddamn life. Yeah, that's incredible. Most people can't do it if they haven't practiced. And I know you want to seem helpful and shit, but why didn't you ask the others if they had tree climbing experience before trying it yourself? Something I'm good at. You mean you can stand over a hole and hold a stick? Man, no wonder this guy was never promoted to a cash register job at a grocery store. He's a dick for absolutely no reason. Well, this is the second time he's just randomly dictified the proceedings. This deep. Some might say too deep. Can we talk about the weight of water and the structure of this building? I'm no aquaphysicist, but I know a bullshit amount of water in a building when I see it. Thanks a lot. Is the movie suggesting that somehow the watchers knew that this lighter would be tossed on the ice and that Danny would be the one to pick it up at this exact point? Or is this a natural ice break that just happened to take Danny and the lighter down? Either way, I'm suggesting the new title for the movie be Convenience Room. What was that? What happened? Huh? Where's Danny? Dude, there's a giant hole where the ice sheet was. What do you think happened? You threw him the lighter, and somehow you're perfectly fine? What part of Ben wasn't anywhere near where the ice broke is hard to understand about this situation. You guys get over here and put your hands on this ice. This laying on of hands idiocy may be the dumbest thing in a movie full of dumb things. Sure, body heat may be the best way to melt it, but your hands give off the least amount of body heat on your body. Many of these people would have frostbite by the end of this nonsense. Whoever is wearing the coat should have that thing in the coat while breathing on it and using their core temperature to warm it up. And there is at least one would-be physicist here who would know to do that also, has no one ever heard of friction? Why are your hands just sitting there? Move them around. Find a coarse leaf and use it like a dish scrubber. Do the hokey pokey and turn it all about. Anything beats this frozen seance. And why the hell are you melting it evenly on every side? Just melt a hole straight to the key. These are the most stupid randomly assembled stereotypes ever to be randomly assembled and stereotyping. These guys all just dove into the room from a door that was flat to the ground. Where exactly is the door supposed to have been, considering the baseboard lighting all the way around here? Guys, I've seen so many movies. Is this Escape Room? Or is this that last Tomb Raider movie where Ex Machina played Laura Kraft? I guess it's a good thing that they have the army chick and that she didn't die in the previous puzzles, so that she can climb this impossible upside down bar. No one else could have done this, and I find that to be tremendously poor sportsmanship on the part of the psychotic escape room creators. Looks like I need four numbers. All right, uh, try one, two, three, four. Yeah, just try anything. That worked really well when you were in the first room. It's a giant sliding puzzle. This room might be the best in the movie, and even it's too simple to solve. An obvious sliding puzzle produces a keypad entry and gives you a handle to a door. Look, escape rooms are extremely popular right now, and there are plenty of amazingly intricate puzzles to choose from. I'm not saying you have to make it so complicated that it confuses the audience. I'm just saying I'd rather not feel like the people you want me to root for are less likely to solve this stuff than to qualify for the Darwin Awards. <laughs> It might be tension, but why are you laughing, asshole? She still has to do a lot to survive this. Just let it go! Just leave it! Just leave it. You guys need that eight ball to exit the escape room, dude. Jason! It then takes five cuts to show True Blood throw a fastball to Insecure. And I don't believe for one minute it was successful. But the movie is telling me it is. Anyway, I sure know my HBO, don't I? Amanda is dead. We aren't. Survival of the fittest. Can you stop being a dick? I guess I'm going to sin human behavior that happens all the time, but of all the people that ask another person to stop being a dick, it's this guy, who's been a dick for no reason at least three times in this movie. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, that's the song that was playing when we crashed. I... They made these rooms for us. The poetic nature of the rooms loses a lot of steam when certain players could die before they even get to their personalized room, though. What if Ben died in the first room with the oven? Then he doesn't get to the second room, which related to him. It's sign language. Yeah. 
My cousin is deaf. They must have known about that too. Okay, well, this is great forethought from Minos. What happens if Ben dies before this? Then you put people in a puzzle they have no chance of solving. And you may be okay with that, but then I don't understand why you put people in an escape room for your own amusement if they can't possibly solve the clues. What are you doing? Quantum Xeno effect. Abstract concept that just happens to start the movie turns out to be super important later, even though it's an abstract concept and doesn't actually apply cliche. Stop telling me to calm down, okay? You're not listening to me! You gotta love how the nerdy girl thinks she can convince three dudes without any quantum physics knowledge that she's right about smashing the cameras when there's three minutes left on the clock. The movie wants us to empathize with her character because she's probably right, but come on, her out of nowhere idea with three minutes left is too little too late. Come on, I'll go next. We need a higher rate. Says who? Did I miss a part where they each found a random Scrabble piece up their butts that spelled out the proper heart rate. The strings! Maybe they mean the low end! All this time, the thinking was, maybe if we get someone's heart rate high enough, that'll solve the clue. And now Jason realizes that testing your limits might mean finding a lower heart rate. And I'm sorry, this is a bullshit puzzle. It can be interpreted both ways, with no logical way to the right answer. Feel free to leave. But may we know it's best to find the Oh. It's good to see the writers of the poems from the original Jumanji are still finding work. Also, this room is yet another one completely left to chance. What if only one of them had opened it, or others were still with them? Or they thought to put some clothes on their hands for grip, or maybe even searched around a while before they found the hatch. The drug trippy room is another curious addition to the escape room's theme of building a room for each player. The only person this relates to is Ben, but he already had the reindeer room. And now I'm wondering which room was Mike's. He died in the last room when Jason tried to speed up his heart rate. His story was that he survived a cave-in at a mine. None of the rooms had anything to do with that. And Danny totally missed the poisonous gas room made for him because he's dead. Ah yes, that classic and clever escape room staple. The thing hidden that you find by randomly pounding on a wall gets me every time. If you were hoping for a five minute vomit inducing wrestling match between two mostly unlikable characters where you already know the outcome because they showed you the survivor at the very beginning of the movie, well congratulations. Also, I have to sin the movie for using strobe lights, spinning floors, and an optical illusion paint job, if for no other reason than it just gave Marvel more ideas on how to further obscure its fight scenes in future movies. And we're back to the beginning of the movie. And not in a cool Lewin Davis kind of way either. More of a really annoying Sisyphus kind of way, if I'm being honest. The oxygen mask. What the hell was she gonna do with that? She used it to breathe, apparently. Even though when we last saw her, she had collapsed on the floor after foaming at the mouth. And about this far from what doesn't even appear to be the same mask. Also, why the hell is there a working oxygen mask in this room? Also, also, she takes out both of these orange suits with one IV pole? I mean, those dudes are out cold, and I'm pretty sure she just hit one of them a single time in the middle of the back. Boy, the movie sure has kicked into high yada yada gear for these last few escapes, huh? So he was being crushed, but just used a shield to hide in the fireplace, and that did the trick. Every year they demand more. The idea that this kind of thing could be going on at this level for many years without anyone finding out about it is almost more unbelievable and upsetting than the fact that this movie made more money than The Shawshank Redemption, A Simple Plan, Clue, and Children of Men combined. That's right, I said Clue. Unless you had lung survivors. The more I hear about this game, the more I realize that they did pick these specific specific six people to open a puzzle box in RSVP in escape room. They didn't throw out a thousand invitations hoping to get a handful. They targeted these people. So what happens if a few of them don't want to play? They wanted to know if luck had anything to do with it. There was really only one room that explored the luck part, and that was the billiards room. If this was some massive social study, you'd have thrown these people into situations that would have required more than 50% luck to survive, like eating at Denny's. At the end of the Kentucky Derby, do you think the horse got surprised? Well, no, because the results of the race will be under review. And despite the track officials coming to the 100% correct decision to disqualify the first place horse, most of us will feel unsatisfied because we'd rather see somebody cheat and win than another horse win on a technicality. Also, the winning horse doesn't usually get strangled. That's the real point I wanted to make. I understand the puzzle maker has overridden the system and realizes that Zoe is still alive and that the games master is now part of the game. But how the hell do you know Ben is dead? Discount Russell Crowe was barely mid strangled. <laughs> The Game Master is now part of the game. Man, this movie just went from bananas to insane fruit salad. Nothing like watching a movie with a solid concept and mediocre execution decide to shoot for finishing as B-movie schlock. You can't leave until we finish our game. Zoe. Oh, I guess Ben was experiencing that temporary unconsciousness that leads to easy ex machinas. We haven't found any evidence of the things you've described. None? None? No evidence of the technological wiring or housing units needed for the complex live broadcast? No evidence of the thousands of gallons of water or reinforced walls to contain it? No evidence of the extreme amount of power that would be needed to heat a thousand square foot oven or cool a two thousand square foot freezer? No evidence of the giant sized custom elevator that had to be built into the foundation of the building? No evidence about the website they had to 
go to? It was simple, MinosEscapeRooms.com. Did they wipe that site out too? The idea that this entire operation could be wiped down in the mere hours since they escaped is the biggest steaming pile of expositional bullshit I have ever had shoved down my throat. Here's an extra 20 sins just for thinking you could get away with that. Also, if you had the power to do all that, wouldn't it have been easier to just send a couple of goons to kill Zoe and Ben as they slowly limped out of the building? Or is Mino slash Sony this dedicated to making a sequel to the escape room? <laughs> well, at least the movie knows when to end. Damn it! We beat them at their own game. Well, technically you survived their game. To beat them at their own game, you'd have to trap them in a death trap with you and then win. So maybe slow down with the bravado there, nerdy chick. The numbers are in a pattern on the staircase. They're coordinates for an unlisted industrial building in the middle of Manhattan. Why would the secret escape room company put out secret coordinates for another building someone could potentially investigate for any reason? I guess if the sequel comes, they'll say, we wanted someone to figure it out. Glad it was you, Zoe. Something, something, rich people. I've got the tool! Not content with five minutes of conversational sequel baiting, movie decides it needs to show us a trial run of the first scene from the next movie to make sure we hit the credits completely confused and unsatisfied. We've intercepted your flight information. It's on. This is the type of bullshit I can't stand in movies. The omniscient puppet master. Earlier, Zoe told Ben... Two weeks. I'm going. Which means the puzzle master knew she would figure out there was something important about the Mino's logo and would fly to New York. And he obviously set up this airplane escape room well before that, despite knowing about Zoe's fear of flying. There are a lot of answers I can accept based on money and power, but time and knowledge are still factors, and this requires knowledge beyond human capabilities. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Shut down all the garbage bags above the detention level. Oh, what's in the box? Truth North is a lie. It's the female orgasm. That's the myth. Whoever did this to us will let us freeze it if we don't get the key out of that ice. Let's kick some ice. I'll see a way out. There is no way out of here. Ignore this terrible drug. Pretend it's not happening. What happens now? They arrive. 